Hello again, it's me, Videosyncratic, and welcome back. I'm just going to give a quick introduction here because, as you will likely be able to tell, the following audio was actually cut from the end of the previous episode just because it was too long. So I highly recommend that if you haven't already, go back and watch the previous episode or this may not make that much sense. Anyway, enjoy. When preparing for this episode, I realised that many of the nations I would end up covering use some variation of an eagle in their iconography, and unsurprisingly, the vast majority of these have a common origin. As with so many things in Europe, this symbol was handed down from the Roman Empire to its virtually infinite successor states. For those of you who didn't know, it is indeed possible to reform the Roman Empire in EU4, although it is a very difficult challenge indeed. While long having associations with power and imperium due to its intimidating appearance, the eagle was made especially prominent after the Marian reforms of the Roman military in 107 BC. Every Roman legion carried a standard, comprising a staff topped by the figure of an eagle, called an aquila in Latin. Due to the exceptionally warlike nature of the Romans, these standards became one of the most iconic symbols of Roman dominance and proved immensely influential in the development of European iconography. The Roman flag in EU4 is further embellished with a laurel crown awarded to Roman commanders during their triumph for martial victories, and also the initials SPQR. This is an abbreviation for Senatus Populusca Romanus, that is, the Senate and People of Rome. This phrase was ubiquitous throughout both the Republic and Empire, and paid homage to Rome's Republican origins. Its presence indicated the dominion of Rome, and it could be found on coinage, government laws and notices, monuments, public works, and in a myriad of other places. As the legitimate successors of the Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, mostly known as the Byzantines today, continued the use of the Imperial Aquila. The most important development of the Byzantine period occurred during the Comnenian dynasty, where the eagle became dicephalic, growing another head. The image of a two-headed eagle is an ancient one, which predated even the Roman Aquila. The double-headed eagle was used by the Hittite Empire of the Bronze Age, and while impossible to prove, some have suggested that the Byzantine adoption of this emblem was inspired by the old Hittite cities, located within the Anatolian heartlands of the Byzantine Empire. Regardless of its origins, the double-headed eagle came to represent the Byzantine Empire, and so any state attempting to claim descent or legitimacy from that polity was likely to adopt a similar motif. This brings us onto our next flag, that of Rum. Beginning in the 11th century, Turkic peoples began moving westward into Byzantine lands, and eventually, a stunning victory was won under the Great Seljuk Empire, effectively taking all of Anatolia. While the Seljuk Empire would rapidly succumb to dynastic infighting, its Anatolian successor state achieved significant success and styled itself as the Sultanate of Rum, after the Roman Empire. Ultimately, even this would collapse into numerous small statelets called Beyliks. One of these Beyliks would end up doing very well indeed, and would even rise to become the Ottoman Empire, bringing us up to 1444. Another flag to claim direct descent from the Roman Empire is that used by Russia. When Constantinople fell to the Ottomans in 1453, the Byzantine Empire came to an end. As a result, the Grand Dukes of Muscovy, the premier Russian state of the time, increasingly came to see themselves as the natural successors of the Byzantine Empire, and thus the rightful Third Rome. This idea was further encouraged by the marriage of Ivan III to the Byzantine princess Zoe Palaiologina in 1472, giving Ivan additional reason to adopt a new coat of arms featuring the Byzantine eagle in that same year. The flag used in EU4 is inspired by the one used by the Russian Empire beginning in 1721. This variation has both of the heads wearing imperial crowns, with a third enlarged crown above these flying the ribbons of the chivalric order of St Andrew. Finally, the eagle also bears a shield depicting St George slaying the dragon, 
the coat of arms of Muscovy, the Russian principality which ended up unifying the rest into a single Russia. Returning once more to Western Europe, another state endeavouring to keep the memory of Rome alive was of course the Holy Roman Empire. From the earliest emperors of the Ottonian and Salian dynasties, the use of the Roman single-headed Aquila in black was codified. While generally associated with the Holy Roman Empire today, it wasn't actually until the mid-13th century that the double-headed eagle was first adopted, likely being influenced from the Byzantine Empire. Due to the complicated nature of the empire, this eagle came to be considered the personal symbol of whoever occupied the office of emperor, rather than the territory as a whole, and so grants directly given by the emperor frequently featured these arms on them somewhere, resulting in it proliferating throughout Europe. The Holy Roman Empire is not the only nation in EU4 to represent the outcome of a unified Germany. While a unified German state wouldn't properly exist until 1871, the idea was beginning to gain some ground towards the end of the 18th century, and the Napoleonic Wars and dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire only served to intensify this debate. I find it likely that the Germany of EU4 is intended to represent the German Confederation, the successor to the HRE, as it shares the same colour scheme and a similar coat of arms. However, the real-life German Confederation, as well as the North German Confederation, and even the short-lived German Empire of 1848, all used double-headed eagles rather than the single-headed eagle seen in-game. I believe that this choice may have been taken to allow for easy distinction. The eagle used on the flag of Germany is also quite similar to the one used for Prussia, which implies, in my mind at least, that the designer created the flag of Germany with it in mind that Prussia would be the one unifying the rest of the German nations into one state. The in-game flag used by Prussia is directly based on the coat of arms adopted by Frederick, the first king of Prussia, in 1701. The Prussian eagle also ultimately comes from the Roman Aquila, albeit by a rather circuitous route. The monastic warrior Teutonic Order was granted the privilege to display the Black Imperial Eagle by the Holy Roman Emperor in a similar case to the Livonian Order discussed previously, the Teutonic Order was secularised into the Duchy of Prussia in 1525, and so the eagle made its way onto the Prussian arms. The main additions Frederick I of Prussia made to this coat of arms was to crown the eagle and provide it with a sceptre and orb to hold in its talons. Together these are the trappings of royalty, and at the time these changes took place, Frederick had just recently assumed the title of King of Prussia. Finally, a monogram formed from R and F was added to the chest of the eagle to stand for Fridericus Rex, that is, King Frederick. While the flag of Poland may feature a similar eagle to the Roman Aquila, its origin is traditionally considered to be quite different and even has a folktale recounting it. Of course, Poland itself exists from the start of the game, and so doesn't really count as a formable nation. However, its coat of arms does form a part of the final flag of this episode, that used by the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, and so its origin is certainly worth examining. According to this origin myth, the legendary founders of the Slavic peoples were a set of three brothers descended from Noah, called Lech, Czech and Rus. During a hunting trip, the trio ended on splitting up, and each would found a new city. On his journey, Lech encountered a fierce white eagle with its wings outstretched to guard its nest and with the setting sun turning the sky red behind it. Awed by this majestic sight, Lech interpreted it as a good omen and decided to settle down there, founding the city of Niezdo, whose name literally means nest in Polish, and becoming the ancestor to the Polish people. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, usually simply referred to as THE Commonwealth in EU4, was formed in 1569 from the union of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The other element of the in-game flag is taken from the coat of arms of Lithuania. The Lithuanian arms depict an armoured knight on a white horse holding a shield and sword aloft. This design is named Vitus, although the origins of this word are unclear. 
Whatever its origin, the Armoured Rider has been used since at least the early 14th century, and it is still used to this day. Now, with that out of the way, that is actually every formal nation of Europe covered. As you may expect, in the next episode, I will be moving on to the rest of the world. Uh, due to the way European Universalis IV is structured, obviously the majority of formal nations are in Europe. However, it is still likely to be a long episode, so apologies if it takes quite a few weeks for me to finish it again. Anyway, I hope again you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, then please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, I always love hearing back from you, so please leave a comment down below, and I'm also on Twitter, so you can get in touch with me there instead if you prefer to. Thank you very much for watching the video, and I hope to see you again soon, at least in the next episode, or possibly beforehand. However, until that point, I hope you have a great time. Ciao.